Pond life, or ponder life, as they say. I could walk this path all day, as long as I've got this view. It's just magic. This light breeze is really helping as well. It's a really warm day. A few clouds in the sky, but it's lovely here. There's a vast array of wildlife to be found on the lake, both above and below the surface. Some of the carp here are absolutely monstrous. There's so many opportunities to shoot here. If I had to give you one piece of advice, it would be don't go anywhere without your camera. So the goal of today is there is no goal. I'm just gonna watch and hopefully bump into a few locals, if you know what I mean. The grebe is fishing here in front of me. I just want to get a couple of shots. Maybe get some video, but it's lovely to see it. It's got its uh, feathers all fruffed up. There's no no female here, so he's just just taking pride in his appearance, I guess. But lovely, beautiful to see. Such great colours, especially in this light. It's amazing. Getting eye level with your subject really does enhance the experience. Well, I think I can tell you who's going to be top rod on this lake today. The water is about nine acres in size. It's a stunning walk, but unfortunately you have to be a member to view it. The tree-lined path has a mixture of willows and hornbeam, as well as tall grass and reeds. It's a stunning place to fish. And if you're lucky, like me, to wander for the day. As an angler, there are plenty of gorgeous big carp in here. Several, over 40 pounds. That's a colossal fish. And even though we're not actually fishing today, it is lovely to watch the shadows dancing in the deep. There's a stack of different bird life on here. Lots of wildfowl, mallards, tufties. There are also families of moorhen and coot on here, which are always lovely to see. Unless they're diving on your baits, of course. The lake itself is situated in the middle of open fields, so plenty of nesting ground for smaller birds like the black cap and the white throat. There's also some good gulls on here as well, black headed gulls and terns. And obviously not forgetting this little guy, the cuckoo. Aha, there you are. Just the culprit that I've been looking for. So in my haste to get out the door this morning, I've actually come out without my macro, but hopefully this should give me enough detail. So this is the scarce chaser, or the blue chaser, as it's most commonly known throughout the UK. 
There's plenty of other dragons here, including Blue Damsel and Four Spotted as well. With the wind dropping down a little, that sun feels really, really warm. Not sure how the fish are reacting, but this guy doesn't seem to be too busy. I'm on the lookout for those tufties. They're on the other side of the lake, and they're a little bit far for me to photograph, but I'll catch up with them. One thing I'm intrigued to find out is where these carp are lurking. In this kind of heat, you'd expect them to be on the top or lurking in the shallows. I'm going to chuck in a few handfuls of broken boilie and corn, see if I can tempt something out. And even though I don't have any fishing gear, I do have an underwater camera to catch something with. Carp can be fickle beasts, as I'm sure many anglers will tell you. And it looks like today is going to be a blank. Oh well, we'll have to come back, won't we? nightmare for anglers, but actually I really love them. I'm sure I wouldn't be saying that at 3.30 in the morning as I swim through my lines. Ah, peace and tranquility. Who needs yoga? certainly does give you a lot of time to think, which, in my case, can be quite dangerous sometimes. What an awesome place. So I've come down to the mill, that's in Chelmsford, and it's on the Essex Carp Syndicate ticket. And it's just a stunning lake, this. Mitch very kindly let me come down to do some wildlife photography, there's lots of bird life, lots of insects, and yeah, a few carp cruising around. It's actually wetting my whistle to come back to carp fishing. About a year and a half ago, I did that inevitable thing of selling my gear and moving on and reinvesting in something else. In my case, it was uh, lenses and cameras to do wildlife photography, and yeah, it was a good move. I enjoy what I'm doing. Um, but over the last, well, certainly the last few months of trying to find lakes and uh, you know, wild fowl and sort of get close to the water's edge, it's kind of made me think maybe I could just do a little bit of fishing and wildlife at the same time, really. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to reinvest into some gear. I've got some good friends who I need to ask some, you know, some advice about how to get back into it. But yeah, I'm going to vlog it and see uh, you can follow the adventure all the way through. I'm going to find some wild lakes, hopefully find some wildlife. Go on a bit of adventure.
And so we venture on into the abyss. And I'm looking forward to part two already. <laughs>